Thank you so much. Uh, let's bring in Ted Deutsch. Uh, he's the CEO of the American Jewish Committee, a former Democratic congressman from uh, Florida and a lifelong uh, pro-Israel activist. Uh, congressman, thanks for joining us. So, so we're learning some new details through a video that CNN just authenticated. Um, we're not going to show it because it is so disturbing. It shows an unconscious, unconscious woman, uh, an Israeli woman, being paraded around by Hamas terrorists. Um, one of the terrorists has his leg draped over her waist. Another holds a clump of her hair. He's cheering Allahu Akbar. Another man is seeing spitting on her head. Um, CNN has confirmed this is a, a German-Israeli dual national. I know uh, you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of these horrific videos uh, on social media and other media platforms today. Uh, what, what's your reaction I don't know if you've seen this one to this one or to any of the others you've seen. Uh, thanks, Jake. I have seen that video and, and I've, I've seen a number of the others. Look, uh, what, what happened in Israel is uh, nothing short of a pogrom. You know what that is. I know what that is throughout the history of the Jewish people. Uh, these are massacres of Jews. This terrorist strike, this terror army went into Israel uh, and slaughtered 300 Israelis. And for perspective, I mean, Israel is a small country. You know that. For perspective, in American terms, that would be as if over 10,000 Americans were slaughtered. And, uh, and it, the barbarity and the, the brutality that we witnessed in videos like this uh, and in the stories that we've heard from friends and, and uh, relatives in Israel, and again, small country, small Jewish community around the world, so many of us have been in constant contact with people that we know across Israel. Uh, this, this horrific action was carried out by a terror group that has no, that, that was intent on trying to, to do something horrific in slaughtering Jews. And I'll just say this, what that shows is the difference between this terror group and what we're going to see in the coming days. And that's the last point I'll make, Jake. The fact is, that going forward, uh, Israel is going to take the necessary action to protect its citizens, just like any other country in the world would, just like any person around the world would expect from its leadership. And every every casualty, every fatality in that battle uh, as a result of what happened by Hamas is Hamas's fault. But the Israeli soldiers will regret every loss of life. These Hamas thugs, these terrorists, these disgusting awful attackers, uh, they relish in it. And the desecration of bodies and the treatment of live bodies, the, of the hostages that are now in Gaza, uh, and, and the parading around of dead bodies as well, uh, it's disgusting. It's, it's something that every person who, who has some sense of decency around the world should look at. And it's the reason that so many world leaders uh, are standing firmly and clearly with Israel, as we all should. Mm -hmm. When you were uh, a member of the House of Representatives, you were a senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the Global Counterterrorism Subcommittee. You would have been privy to some U.S. intelligence. Um, what do you make of the fact that neither U.S. nor Israeli intelligence had any idea this was coming? Uh, Jake, when I chair the Middle East Subcommittee for 10 years, I would have responded exactly the way I'm going to respond now, which is there will be uh, there will be plenty of opportunities to try to figure out what happened here, uh, but I'm respectfully going to suggest that this isn't that time. Uh, this is a this is a moment when one of our closest allies, a country that uh, sits in a place that is exposed to dangerous regimes, uh, is under attack. That's what happened yesterday. Uh, again, I think there'll be lots of. I, I know throughout the throughout the day there have been people trying to figure out exactly what happened here. It's a really important exercise, uh, but we need to, to focus on what's happening at the moment. And that's that's the fact that this terror army came in, has now launched over 5,000 rockets all across Israel, uh, 1,900, close to 2,000 people already acknowledged to be injured and uh, and reservists from around the country, some, some multiple generations within the same family being called up in the citizen's army that Israel has to defend their country. That's what we're focused on at the moment. What do you think Congress can do without a Speaker of the House? Um, obviously, Israel is going to want aid, help, additional supplies. 
uh, the former ambassador, Michael Oren, was on earlier saying that one of the things that the U.S. often does in situations like this is help with ammunition, um, replenish, uh, help Israel uh, replenish ammunition, and then Israel pays it back uh, at a later point in time. Um, but right now, there is literally no Speaker of the House, and it is unclear how Congress, which the House, obviously, as you know, needs to be the first one to begin the process of authorizing any uh, aid package to any other country. What, what happens? Yeah, I, obviously, um, obviously, I, I don't know exactly how, uh, how that will work out. I do know a couple of things, though, in terms of how Congress and the White House are approaching this. Uh, we, we heard in Congress from, uh, uh, from Greg Meeks, I, I thought he made clear that he's, in, in, in your conversation with him, the ongoing uh, discussions he's having with leadership about how this would get done. And I, I trust that it will. I have no idea how. But I do know that the statements from uh, from a, a huge number of members of Congress, uh, House and Senate, uh, just like leaders around the world, have been incredibly supportive of Israel in the face of this this horrific attack. And the pr most importantly, Secretary Austin and the president of the United States made clear uh, the commitment of the United States to Israel's security. I don't know. There are a lot of things that I don't know about what's happening in Congress. Uh, Jake, we're all trying to, to figure that out. There's never been a moment where a Speaker of the House has been kicked out. Um, that's that's something that that uh, the internal politics of which they'll have to figure out. But at a moment like this, when a close ally is uh, is facing the kind of risks in the aftermath of this uh, this really terrible massacre, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to do that. And Congress will have to figure that out. Uh, and I'll look forward to the conversations that I'll be having with my former colleagues, Democrats and Republicans alike, who are who are dedicated to doing what's necessary to stand with our ally. Former Congressman Ted Deutsch, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jake.